Good morning. We're back at the beach, but instead of taking you guys to see the ocean, I figure at this point you've seen it. I'm going to show you this cool mermaid mural or mosaic or whatever mosaic mural. I'm going to take you to see the mermaid. And while we're doing that, we're going to talk about where do subconscious blocks come from? I don't know how much science is behind this, but probably some. I would think it probably lines up with the brain. I'm not make it, making a guarantee, but this is what I've been told and it makes sense to me. So I'm going to tell you guys. Um, and the theory is that sort of from the time we're born to about age seven, because of brain development, we're almost in this sort of hypnotic state, right? We're just taking everything in and kind of accepting it for the most part without question. It all kind of gets recorded to the subconscious brain. All right, pause in the story for the mural. I might actually see if I can flip the camera around. There you go. So here's the mural. This is actually the <laughs> public bathrooms here at Stewart Beach. It's not actually in the city of Stewart, but it's the closest beach to the city of Stewart. We're actually out in unincorporated Martin County. Isn't this cute? And look, it's all like mosaic in the background. Ooh, come around, show you the back. Fish. Okay. Pretty cool, right? Usually I like to show you guys the ocean because nobody gets bored with the ocean, but I do remember when we first moved here, it's like almost every weekend, flip the kit around. Yeah, when we first moved here almost every weekend, um, I was posting videos on my personal Facebook feed of the beach and finally one of my friends was like, Lisa, you live near the beach, we get it. <laughs> So it's like, oh, maybe not everybody wants to see this every week. I'm going to go stand by the mermaid here. Let's see, they got her face in a way because face and hands are the hard part. Let's see, they did a pretty good job on the hands. Anyway, right, so your subconscious blocks, where they come from. So zero to about seven, your brain is not fully developed. The part of your brain that does the critical thinking, the analysis is not yet online. So you're almost in this hypnotic state. You just sort of take everything straight into the subconscious, record it all, and accept it all as truth. The other thing that's going on at that age is we're very vulnerable, right? Like we can't really fend for ourselves and that's um, a little bit scary, right? So a lot of times when there are things we don't understand, we make things up to um, make it seem like we have a little more power and we're more in control which is interesting now that I say that because once we're adults, we tend to make up things um, that make it seem like we have less power and we're less in control. So I don't know, somebody with more training than me can chime in on that. But um, yeah, so what ends up happening, for the most part, this system works really well because if you think about it as a little kid, um, you, you've got a lot to learn, right? You're in this body, you've got to figure out how to roll over, how to stand up, how to balance on two legs, how to walk. You got to figure out, you know, understand whatever native language is being spoken around you. Um, understand it and then learn to speak it. You, there's a lot. You got a lot on your plate. So you're just sort of accepting everything in as it's presented to you and you're making up stories in your mind um, that give you more control over your experience of life than what you actually have. So these might be things like, let's say you were a rowdy little kid and you were always getting in trouble. And then when you were five, your parents got divorced. You may have made up inside your head that your parents got divorced because you were bad. And if you had been better behaved, they would still be together. But because you decided this, like at age five, you may not even consciously remember it, but it may be built into how you understand yourself and the world around you. So you might just think you're bad, right? So what's the point 
I don't know, paying taxes because I'm bad anyway, <laughs> right? Might as well steal that Snickers bar because I'm bad anyway. So for the most part, this serves us well, but every now and again, we draw the wrong conclusion from the evidence in front of us. And then something about the way the world works or maybe the way the human mind works, once we've got this wrong idea, it'll keep getting presented to us. So we have opportunities to realize, oh, I have this false belief. It's probably about time to deal with it. And if we don't, it just keeps coming up, which is why people get into patterns, right? This is why your friend dates basically the same guy over and over again, right? Different name, different body, <laughs> but basically the same guy is because she's being presented with some sort of false belief that she needs to identify and clear. And that, believe it or not, comes into weight loss. So all of us have these subconscious false beliefs that keep getting presented to us over and over, but most of us are so sort of unconscious to what's going on, we don't notice them. But you start doing work on your own with some kind of practitioner, and it doesn't have to be me, right? Like there's a lot of good, I, I don't know a lot about therapy, but I'm sure there are therapists that do that kind of work. Um, there are coaches that will help you see some of those things. And there are a lot of sort of like woo woo energy healers um, who do that, who help you more from the energetic level to find and to change those beliefs. So if you have something, and again, right, this doesn't necessarily have to be weight related. If there's something in your life that you just are stuck on, there's probably a subconscious limiting belief, something that's not true, that you believe is true, that is the cause of that issue. And my message to you today is that you can uncover those beliefs and you can change them. There's a lot of techniques to do that. So if you have a problem where you're stuck and you just keep hitting the same thing again and again and again, I can help you with that or other people can help you with that. But I would encourage you to invest in yourself. There's nothing more valuable than your mind because this is filtering everything else in your life. Um, and a lot of these things you don't have to continue to suffer with. So. Anyway, thoughts for the day. Talk to you later. Bye.